Hello everyone, hope you all are doing good. I had been wanting to make a steampunk bottle from a very long time and had been collecting things for this. Finally, I decided to make one. This can make a perfect gift for a male friend. There are a very few bottle arts for men, this can be one. I am Hilda and I welcome you all to my channel Hilda Crafty. So without wasting any time, let's just dive into this video. I'm taking this Ballantine bottle. It is flat and I thought it would be good for this project. Let's start by giving its smooth surface a rough base so we can get a good grip for all the items we're going to stick on it. Taking equal parts of PVA glue and water, mix well, using tissue paper. I have taken kitchen tissue here, place on the bottle and apply this glue mixture on top with a brush. Just pat the brush on the tissue with glue, don't drag. Cover the entire bottle with this. We will cover the bottom as well and let it dry very well. We will get a beautiful texture on the bottle. This will provide a good grip as I mentioned earlier. I let the bottle dry overnight. Now let's apply a coat of black gesso and cover the entire bottle. You can use any brand from the market, I'm using homemade gesso. I have a video on this, link given in the description box and in the i button to check that out. I make very good black gesso, better than the market one. Now let the bottle dry very well, I kept it in sun and now the bottle is absolutely dry. Taking this lace, using this heavy gel medium, it is matte based. This is really good and will help me stick all the metal pieces I'm going to use for this project. I got this from Itsy Bitsy. Place the lace from the middle of the bottle and not from the side. The color of the lace really does not matter as we will cover it with gesso later. Give a coat of this gel on the lace as well. I had this jute piece. I got it with some date palm jaggery I ordered. I don't throw anything, plan to stick it on top, use a rubber band for the time being and cover with gel. It will make the jute piece hard and stiff. Ok, let me show you what all I have collected. I got these chipboard pieces from Itsy Bitsy. I think these cogs wheel and gear wheels will be perfect for this project. This clock silicone mold from Itsy Bitsy. Some big buttons I have collected over time. This beautiful chain I got for some project for a customer. These keys. One on the left is from an old lock. Other two are charms. These are from clothes pin which break open. This safety pin which has a story. Number and alphabet stickers. This stitch button leaflet. I can't sew at all. It's been lying. Might as well use it for this project. And some washers which I've collected from a hardware shop. As I don't throw anything, I've used this toothpaste box, cut it to store these precious things. Okay, let me start with the chipboard. I'm cutting it so I can place it the way I want. Very easy to cut these. Get an idea by placing it before pasting it. Using the same heavy gel medium, apply and place which suits your eye. These I decided to place on this side this piece on the other side. This glue sticks very fast. Just press the chipboard with your palm and it's done. Okay, now using Fevicryl Malted Clay, mix the raisin and hardener well till it becomes a one color. Use talcum powder on the silicone mold, spread well. Now take small pieces of clay and place it in the mold. Press the clay well. I am doing so for all the five designs on the mold. This clay dries in 90 minutes, so we have to work within this time. Let me give you a tip. Once we are done, we will let the clay dry for some time. This will make it easy to come out of the mold. So I let it dry for few minutes. By that time, let me stick some washers. Just placing it randomly here and there. No rules. Settle for what looks good to your eye. I have done so on all the four sides. Let's get back to the mold. Add little talcum powder on your fingers and just push and turn the mold to get a beautiful piece. This is how it looks. If you have any old wristwatch which is just lying somewhere, you can put that to use if you wish. I had little clay left so I made two more and one half. Let's take these. Just randomly placing these. 
This is the half one. Stick these before they dry completely so you can place them on the sides like this. Now for the alphabet stickers, decided to use the W as M. I have used few stickers here and there. Now let's move on to the stitch buttons. I plan to use the two parts separately. These metal pieces will really add a lot of interest to our project. Placing these randomly again, done so on all sides. Now for the safety pin. I had put up a stall and was struggling to hang a few things. A girl next to my stall came running and handed me the safety pin and held the chair I was standing on. I thanked her and said that I'll take this as a lucky charm. And believe me, I did the best at the stall selling most of my craft items. I had kept it with me and thought of using it here. This beautiful chain. You can use a zip. I didn't want to. I somehow don't like it. Some buttons. Just find things which are waste in your house. Can be some earring which you don't wear anymore. Anything. I have these two locks. We'll use one here and the other later as charm. I made these three keys. I made a separate video for that. A vintage key, antique key and a rusty key. Do check that video, link given below. Okay, let me try this vintage key. Uh, I think this is too big. No, let me try the rusty one. Just work out on placing what you have in your hand. No, not this one. Let me try the antique one. Yes, I think this is going well. I'll settle for it this way. Apply a generous amount of glue and stick. Adding a few stickers to fill up the empty spaces. Time to remove the rubber band. Let it dry. This is how it looks. Still some work left. Let's get going with it. Now apply black gesso on the entire bottle. Cover all the items we stuck with black gesso. The bottle looks lovely like this but we need to add a few more steps for the final look. Before we move on to the next step, the gesso coat has to dry very well. I left it overnight to dry. Okay, now taking teal blue fevicryl acrylic paint. I'm using an old brush. Just take very little paint on the tip, remove the excess and dab little here and there. Usually old metal bottles rust from various points and leave a bluish color. Trying to show that. Do so on all sides. It looks a bit too much but trust me the final look will just show a hint of this. Let this color dry. Now I'm using moss green. Doing the same steps. Rusty bottles have little greenish look here and there. We are trying to get that look here. Do so on all sides and let dry. Now let's get closer to the final look. Taking pearl metallic bronze, just a little bit. Using very little paint and dry brushing on all the high points. Keep the brush straight at 90 degree angle for best results. You will see that all the pieces get beautifully highlighted with this step. Let dry. Now using very little of pearl metallic rust. Just a little bit. Using the leftover chain, added a key on one end and the lock I showed earlier on the other. Wrapping round the neck of the bottle. Use the gel generously and place it so that the key and lock hang as a charm. Trying to show that we have the key to all our problems. We just need to have patience to unlock them. We'll use matte varnish when the paint is absolutely dry and now for the final reveal. This is my version of a steampunk bottle, a handcrafted bottle to gift a male friend. Most items used for this video is from Itsubitsi. You can use my coupon code HILDA5 to get additional 5% discount, link given below. Do subscribe to my channel if you're new here. This is all for today. We'll catch you soon in my next video. Until then, bye-bye, take care and I love you all.